Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of Darts Around the Globe. A series where we meet a new darts player from a new country every episode. I'm your host Pim Huberts and today's guest is one-time world championship participant from Canada, Jim Long. Hi there, I'm Jim Long from Canada and you're listening to Darts Around the Globe. Welcome. Hey, thank you very much for having me, Pim. Um, yeah, we'll just jump into it right away. Uh, how is life now in Canada? Uh, you know what? We are still on lockdown. I go back to work on the 25th of May. Um, and uh, the online darts it has been unbelievable. Playing more darts now than I've played almost in my whole time, lifetime, you know, because there's mm-hmm. a match or tournament every day to be played. Um, but, um, yeah, things are still on lockdown here. They're starting to open up a bit slowly. Um, but, yeah, it's been, it's been a w- weird time for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, at least it uh, sounds good that you are that you are doing fine. Um, talking about that online darts, you are one of the first big darts players to say, hey, I'll, uh, I'll just join the, the tournaments. Um, uh, is it great practice for you? It is. It's funny because I ha- I've had a webcam for a very long time, like a year. Never, ever used it. Never set it up. Just had it here and never uh, got online and then you just kind of get forced into it and um, you know I I practiced uh, quite a bit with a buddy of mine here in Ontario named Matt Campbell Mm -hmm. of course from the world's last year and um, we used to drive an hour each way to meet in the middle and play darts for a few hours now just call them up and play and that's it and now like man I've met so many fantastic players and people from uh, the COVID tournaments that I've been into, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's just it's just been unbelievable. Do you think that when the season continues, there will still be some online darts going on? Because I mean, it really is the best way to meet darts players from all over the world. It is, and like here in Canada, it's so big. Um, I played Adam Stella a couple times on uh, online only ever played the, the guy one time in my life, an actual person, um, because he lives in Nova Scotia. I live in um, in Ontario, and we're like a flight away from each other. Mm-hmm. And that's just one guy. I'm like, like I play Kylie Edmonds constantly, and uh, I've only ever played him twice in person. So it's it's quite a, quite a change for sure. Yeah, um, let's start talking about uh, your own career in darts. Um, yeah, well, how did you start playing? Um, I was uh, out of high school, just finished high school, and uh, I worked uh, a job in a factory and um, uh, making wood flooring, and I used to play pool, and um, mm-hmm. I was on in this job. We were working straight afternoons for like three months, so I didn't go and play pool. It was always on Monday nights, so... Uh, after three months, I got back onto the uh, day shift, and I went to play pool, and everybody was playing darts. And uh, they needed one more guy to have just a regular uh, blind draw where you can partner up with anybody in the room. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so I uh, I joined just so they had even numbers, and um, I have never played pool since, to be honest. So, yeah, just started like that. Yeah, and we're talking about steel tip darts here because what I what I noticed um, in my stay in Minnesota is that literally all the bars they have soft tip machines, and I couldn't find a a steel tip, just a regular dartboard everywhere. So did you start on steel tip right away? Yeah, do you know something? I uh, still to this day have not really had an official game of soft tip darts. Wow. Yep, there's no soft tip machines in uh, London, Ontario, where I'm from, and uh, there's some like an hour to two hours away. But you know, I don't even have a. I actually, I, I do have a set of soft tip darts, but I put steel points in them, and that's it. But mm-hmm. uh, no, I've never played soft tip. Is it different than the United States? Then is is steel tip bigger in Canada than soft tip, or is it just your yeah. region? Steel tip is is bigger in Canada. And um, I think that, like, the soft tip is is making headway because it is so convenient. But, um, you know, I think also now when soft uh, steel tip's been kind of forced to be able to have these tournaments um, online 
with a video camera. You know, we have webcams set up and video chat, and we can uh, play tournaments um, from your own home. So, uh, Soft Tip is has had that benefit already. Um, you know, and mm -hmm. I think. Uh, you know, with all the scoring apps, because Softip has its own scoring system, you don't have to do any of the math. Um, you know, we use Dart Connect here, and um, it's just amazing. So, yeah, I think Steel Tip is bigger, and uh, I think Soft Tip is still a game that you know a lot of guys play. It. Yeah, well, uh, that's uh, that's great. Um, yeah, you talked already about how you well joined your first tournament um, at what moment did you start taking the darts more seriously uh well when i was when i was young and i started um i remember i gave the guy who owned the bar that i played in uh some money and he went into london because i lived out in the country he bought me my first set of darts um and i played uh, with those darts for years and i mean i i'm a big fan of the darts. I have like 50 sets myself, but um, I've always played in a dart league, um, always. And so, um, you know, it's competitive, very good dart players in town here. Um, but uh, as for taking it more seriously, uh, not until really, um, I'd say probably, you know, 2017, when um, I, I finally got some opportunity to start going out and playing because mm -hmm. worked uh, six days a week for ten years, and uh, you couldn't go. So these travel tournaments and stuff. There's always local tournaments here and stuff. But yeah, I've been playing fairly competitively for for a while. Yeah, um, yeah. Before you're going to uh, start at your more professional career in uh, two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen, I was wondering about. Uh, youth darts in Canada because I know at least in the United States you you can't enter a bar at 21 under 21 yeah is it difficult for youth to play darts in North America so in, in Canada too you know I don't know about about the states and how that works there but uh, there were, I didn't know anything about youth darts growing up but now there's leagues in every city and um, there's there's two in London, I believe, and um, yeah, so we they'll go on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning, and they have um, the Moose Lodge or um, a Legion. They are okay to have the kids in there in the morning until mm -hmm. they're finished, and yeah, there's all kinds of youth leagues, and, uh, and I mean everywhere, uh, so the kids nowadays have a great opportunity to play, you know, darts at a young age. Yeah, um, sounds uh, sounds perfect. Um, if we look at the period between you playing darts in uh, in London in Ontario uh, and the uh, year two thousand seventeen two thousand eighteen, where you, for example, had a great year on the CDC tour, um, I know in the space between you played some Canadian championships. But um, yeah, what what happened in those years? Um. So we have a, a thing in, uh, in Canada where you play your provincials. So you, you have to qualify to go to provincials, and then everyone who qualifies goes to, you know, the, the city, and then you play down until you have the, the eight players who will make what's called Team Ontario or Team New Brunswick or whatever uh, mm -hmm. province it is. And then um, once a year after provincials are done, we all come together for a national event, and it's it's all over the place, uh, you know, from Vancouver, uh, you know, all the way out to to Newfoundland and stuff. So it's widespread. We go everywhere, and if you make your prov provincial team, you play in the nationals. And then every year there will be a national champion, the the man and the woman who wins the uh, the the championship that year. So there's always been like that level of play. I made the team for my first time in Ontario in 2004. Mm -hmm. And I made it for three straight years. And then, uh, you know, I, I missed a few years and didn't play a few years, depending on the kids' ages and uh, my son playing sports and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, th I started back into the provincials again back in 2015. Um, and uh, I was lucky enough to win the uh, national championship in 2018. Yeah, so you already knew you were one of the well, greater darts players from uh, from Canada at that moment. Um, did you choose at that moment that moment to to 
join the CDC and travel even more um, for darts? Um, you know something? I, I knew of the CDC, but uh, at that time, I, there was nothing close to my area. And um, uh, this was in 2017. It was the second event uh, that year. They came to uh, Buffalo, New York, so about a two and a half hour drive for me. So I wanted to support it. Um, anytime, you know, events like that are in my area, I always go because they're trying to make darts better. So I always try to go and support them. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember very clearly that that whole event I lost uh, to Danny Lauby Jr. And I lost to Leonard Gates that weekend. Uh, I didn't do anything spectacular, but um, I, I had the best time. Like, I played really good darts, and I lost, you know, quite badly, actually. Leonard got me 6-1. to one. So, but I I enjoyed it, and so we decided right away we're going to go to the next event, which was in Ohio. It was a six-hour drive, um, so we went there as well. Um, I couldn't do the last event. It was in Philadelphia, and I had already... Uh, gone to Vegas that year uh, mm -hmm. for uh, the very first uh, PDC um, World Series of Darts. So, yeah, so I started up and it was just a coincidence. Those were two weekends I had off when uh, in 2017. And then in 2018, the overtime stopped. Uh, I worked for General Motors. Uh, we built the Equinox there. And overtime, six days a week, mandatory overtime So for so wow. long. So, yeah, so... I was, um, you know, finally in early 2018, the overtime stopped, and I just said, I'm going to go to every single CDC event I can get to, and that's it. And, yeah, uh, well, that halfway th worked. Yeah, halfway through the year, that's when they opened up the uh, spot to the to the world championships. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, going on the full tour, from on the full CDC tour, worked out really well. Better Was it better than expected? Oh, yeah, by far better than I expected. Um, you know... I I don't – it's funny. You see somebody play great darts, and you think they're just so amazing, but you don't really think about, you know, how how, you, how much of a player you are. And um, so it surprised me to do well um, and, uh, and that. But I just know that win or lose, I enjoy, like, tough competition like that. So I I joined it, and it went well better than I ever could have expected. Mm-hmm. And then, the, well, after that season, you qualified for your first PDC World Championship. Um, yeah, at the moment you realized you were qualified for the best darts tournament in the world, what did you feel? Well, you know, it's funny because I'm a fan of darts, so I've watched the last three World Championships from home, you know. Um, you know, it's when I'm off, I'm off for two weeks shutdown at Christmas, um, all every year, yeah. and so uh, a factory, our factory shuts down. So I always watch it. Never occurred to me in a million years I'd be there playing. And so uh, when I joined the CDC just to play it because I wanted to, and uh, and then you know it's a little unfortunate because I'm sure more players would have joined right away or whatever had they announced the the PDC spot at the beginning. But it was uh, it was four events in already mm -hmm. out of ten. So it was a little unfortunate for uh, the other guys, but things just worked out for me that year, honestly. And it was a real shock to be going. I was, uh, it was pretty nerve wracking. I'm not gonna lie, to be uh, in the back room waiting to go and uh, go up to the stage. But experience of a lifetime. Yeah, you played your first game. I remember watching it uh, against uh, Mickey Mansell. It was. <laughs> I have to admit, it wasn't the most exciting game to watch. Um, you you've probably uh, played better games, but I mean, you you've <laughs> won you've won your first game uh, there, and then the game after it against Benito van der Pas, you also played a really good game. Um, yeah, was it your level at the championship, or at least winning a game? I guess you wouldn't have expected that, right? No, um, I. I went with like no expectations, just wanted to play good and not look bad, you know, on the stage and that. But to be honest, you get up there and it's mesmerizing to stand on the stage where usually you just see the camera angles on your television from. And uh, and to see John McDonald and, and the guys announcing and 
So it is, um, it's a surreal moment to say the least. And then, you know, I, sh I shot a 180 with my very first turn at the board there, which uh, I guess, I don't know if it made me more nervous, really. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was funny because the pressure to hit just a good score, like I wasn't thinking about winning or losing. I just, did, I just didn't want to shoot bad. And I think that's why I did shoot poorly, you know, mm -hmm. um, because I was just trying so hard not to shoot bad scores. And then the doubles were fairly easy because, you know, it wasn't shooting score anymore. You know what I mean? And uh, and that. And then my next match match with Benito was um, it was much more comfortable. Uh, Benito and I had uh, like lots of talking in the back in the warm up room just before we came to the stage, so mm -hmm. I was quite comfortable. Um, and Honestly, it's it's a surreal moment when you're standing up there and you see the crowd. I thought Mickey was going to beat me pretty easily. I watched him win the uh, PDC uh, uh, Pro Tour event. So, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, he, he certainly knows how to play. Um, 2019 uh, had another tournament for you. It's I'm talking about the PDC World Cup of Darts. Uh, you played it with uh, Dawson uh, Merchel. That tournament went also pretty well. You won from Italy, you won from Australia and lost eventually to, well, again, someone from the Netherlands or a Dutch team uh, right now. Um, how did it feel to represent your country in a darts tournament? Yeah, that that was an amazing, amazing experience, honestly. Um, great time in Germany. Um, you know, and Dawson have, having a tour card and playing on the on the tour and stuff, he was the captain, and I made that very clear to him right away to uh, to decide on where we're going, what what event, we're, uh, rotation and stuff. Um, but uh, it was a great great time, and uh, you know, Italy. I was told that we were, we got the best draw because Italy had yet to win a match there. Mm -hmm. Well, they show up with two. Uh, very good dart players who actually uh, both have tried to get their Q school cards, you know, getting their tour card. Um, so that was like, I think we had the second highest uh, combined averages uh, between Italy and us in the high nineties. So it was a, a surreal experience as well. Um, and then, you know, beating uh, Australia, they were the number five ranked team. And, I'm a little embarrassed to say when I booked my trip, I booked it home for because I had my national event the the Monday after. Uh, on the Sunday there, I booked my flight home for three o'clock in the afternoon, and then mm -hmm. we upset Australia, and I had I had to cancel my flight and find a new flight home because we had to play, uh, you know, the Netherlands the next day. So. Yeah, well, that was certainly a surprise. You won from Kyle Anderson, which is also a pretty big name. I'm talking about this year's World Cup of Darts. Well, we don't really know if it's going to continue like it's uh, like it used to uh, used to go. Um, do you think because there's no CDC events played yet? Do you think you have a chance of um, being the partner of Jeff Smith if it's if the tournament is going on this year? You know, to be honest, I'm not really sure how the CDC is going to run it. Uh, we're planning, the CDC is planning on picking up in July. Hopefully things have quieted down. I, I, so far it's in the plans to go in July. Um, now, it's it's most likely, in my opinion, probably going to be Matt Campbell mm -hmm. because uh, it runs on a two-year order of merit the same way as the PDC does. And... I will be losing points in the first two events where Matt will only be get, getting points. So um, for me to take that spot, I'd probably have to – Matt would have to have a poor couple weekends and I'd have to have two good weekends. So I'm thinking most likely it'll be Matt Campbell there. Will we see you another time in the on that tournament again, the World Cup of Darts? Because I know Matt Campbell, you, you already said it before, it's, it's a big talent. Matt is a fantastic player. Um, and he is, uh, his three dart finishing is, uh, some, is some of the best in North America, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, every year's new, we get points and people play against you at a certain time. Uh, so, you know, you need a little bit of luck and you need to play good darts and you need to, you know, beat the guy when he plays his best darts. So that anything could happen. I don't know. I'll, I'll be playing the CDC as long as they have it. That's all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you know, 
uh, the CDC. I'll be playing the CDC, and the PDC spots will be available uh, hopefully for a long time. So I hope to get back both to the Worlds and to the World Cup one day. Yeah, um, talking about the CDC tour, they changed a little bit of their, you know, you can say rules. There are now um, three events in Canada, three events in the uh, United States. Also, I think the Canadian players, if they want, they can choose to only play the Canadian events. Um, do you think it was, a, it was a good decision? And do you think it's going to make players from Canada uh, join these CDC tournaments more? You know something? Traveling in Canada is real costly. Um, you know, like I said, it's big province and hard to, or big uh, big uh, country and hard to get around. Um, so it's hard to say. Uh, the, the the CDC did what they kind of had to do. Um, I know the PDC wants more involvement from Canada. So I know they. Um, you know, if you want the World Cup spot, you have to go to all six events, even uh, in the states. Mm-hmm. But if you only are looking for the World Championship spot, then the three in Canada count. So, you know, it's a it's an expensive game when you start having to travel and fly. You know, so I don't know. It's just something that time will tell. Um, but the benefits of going are are, are just. When I was done at the World Championships, I just thought, you know, there's I got so many buddies who I'd love to see get the opportunity to to play at the William Hill. So yeah. it's definitely worth making the trip and trying it because it's a great event. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you look at those more regional tournaments more, um, besides the CDC uh, events, do you know players who you know are playing very well and you think, oh, they, they should definitely play on the CDC tour, but just... Um, not going there because the traveling is too expensive or it's it's too many hours to to fly. Yeah, there's uh, Canada is so full of good dart players. It's it's ridiculous. Um, there's players that don't even travel, uh, and just in Ontario that I know of, that can stay at a high 80s and 90 average all the time. So um, it's not even just you know they're just don't they don't have the interest like of traveling in that but um you know when you go across canada and you see so many guys um you know i've been beaten by guys from from newfoundland that i didn't even know who they were before you know and they just play fantastic darts so um yeah canada's got a lot of good dart players and just because you get that cdc spot you're not the number one player in canada you just got the spot from this event that's it you know there's just too many good ones and you know you see jeff smith obviously uh uh, you know, probably the best player in North America. Danny Bagish is a is a, obviously got something to say about it. But I mean, mm-hmm. um, you know, and Adam Stell is playing great darts. There's just tons. Dave Cameron, um, you know, who's done all the BDOs. Yeah. So there's there's so many good dart players. It's hard to just say, you know, that that's the one who got it is the best. That's yeah. not really the case. Yeah, what would you say to aspiring new darts players who don't have uh, the money to travel everywhere? Like, where to start? Um, honestly, it's it's unfortunate because like I'm I'm in Ontario and I'm in southern southern Ontario, so I'm only a couple hours from Detroit. So like the CDC, I didn't fly to anything. I drove to Chicago, drove to New York, and I drove to Philadelphia and Ohio and. And that, so I was quite lucky. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for me, I I'm okay. I've been at my job for a long time and stuff, and I don't have a mortgage. So, I feel bad for people who have to try and get time off. is is a hard thing as well, you know. Like to try and get time off work, it's not just you know, I gotta I need Saturday off because you gotta fly out Friday, you gotta come home Monday. Um, so, I. I don't know. I don't don't know what to tell guys who, you know, have to you know make the decision whether or not it's financially worth it to to make that choice to play the CEC because there's a lot of good dart players and you may go and you know it, you may not even break even, let alone get the spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe they have to at least try one CDC. Uh, weekend and see uh, how it goes uh, let's talk more about the developments going on in the cdc tour um one development that i was really excited for 
was the the tour card holders in Costa Rica. The CDC gave some, well, they did an event there in Costa Rica and gave a bunch of tour card holders to players in the country over there. Do you think in the future the CDC will expand their boundaries even more, like going to Mexico or more Central American countries? I I have no idea. Honestly, they to me, I think the end goal was to have a CDC in the United States and then a CDC in Canada, and then they wouldn't intermingle. You know what I mean? Um, it's just the problem of having people available to run the events, um, you know, and, you know, they have to grow the event. Um, right now, um, I just can't see how. I mean, if those people want to come to the tournament, that's that's another thing altogether, but um, I just don't see them being able to expand it until they separate it because, you know, like I said, the, the cost of traveling is, is very expensive. In the United States, I think flights are quite a bit cheaper. They can just grab a flight for $100, but, um, you know, for me to fly to, um, you know, to you know, Nova Scotia or whatever, um, you know, round trip, it's $250 or, or more, mm-hmm. and that's one of the closer places to go to, and it's on a discount airlines, and yeah. So if I if I understand you correctly, the perfect future for you for you will be like a pro tour in Canada and the pro tour in the United States separately. Well, you know what? I I I'd miss all my American friends to be honest, but um I know that is where the CDC originally had planned on going to having two separate tours. Um you know Canadians would only play the Canadians, the Canadian guy, the guy who wins would get the PDC spot, you know, and it would be, you know, pretty clear. Top two guys, if there's no uh, card holder, it would be the World Cup team mm-hmm. um, and that. But, you know, they just, right now it's just too, like the CDC, you know, has been around five, six years, but they just made the deal with this PDC in 2018, right? So we've only sent two players. Um it's just that everybody wants an in on it, and the decision to try and grow it is, is you know, it's a tough one. People are pushing and want more, and I know the PDC wanted more involvement in Canada as well. Um, so it's it's a tough one. I mean, I know that's what they want eventually, but it just takes time to get people involved, to pe- get people committed to going, mm-hmm. and to, to maybe adjust the system um, where... Uh, you know, somebody said instead of having uh, Q school where you can win your Q school card uh, here in, in for the CBC, is maybe they should be investing more into uh, qualifiers to get more money in through the qualifiers and have people more people come to the event. So yeah. it's a tough one, and it's a it's going to be hit and miss to see exactly what works the best and what works great for a couple of years might not work in a couple of years, you know, and like, it's not like the PDC where, you know, people are playing for a living and they're going to have their 128 guys, you know what I mean? Trying to be professional. This is, you know, this is not a professional league here. It's, we all have jobs and mm-hmm. responsibilities and families and yeah. So I don't know. It's going to be a tough one. And, um, like I said, I'll be going to the mall and, uh, I had already, uh, made my plans to fly to Denver and uh, Calgary and Halifax. Uh, luckily, I did not buy tickets, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, hopefully, we get as many people out as we can and continues to grow. Yeah, I mean, talking about buying tickets, I, I already, <laughs> I already booked my tickets to uh, Toronto, the first event, to uh, to play the qualifiers over there. But hey, unfortunately, that's not going uh, going going on. Otherwise, uh, we we, oh. we probably would have met over there. Yeah, I was just I was surprised. That's too bad. And you had you had your uh, your flight booked and everything. I had my flight booked. I had my Airbnb booked. I had everything uh, going on. But at the end, it was fine. But I still missed out on a great experience, of course. Oh yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. And you know what? Like, hopefully, hopefully you got a refund. I don't know how that works for you, but. Hopefully uh, you did, and hopefully uh, you can come to the next ones. Well, I did. I did get a refund, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll, you will see me uh, at uh, some point. Um, let's talk about more about those organizations. We talked about the CDC before. Um, 
I know in North American darts, there is the American Darts Organization. You enter some events of ADO2. Uh, and then there's also some WF tournaments in Canada. Um, where do you think the future is? Is it the CDC, maybe the American Darts Organization, or is it the WF? Um, you know, it's funny. Like, I, like, I think the difference is who... Um, who each each of these organizations are are affiliated with. The CDC gets you a spot at the World Championships. That's the professional. Um, I took my wife and my two kids to England, and we stayed at an Airbnb. And I knew that even if I lost to Mickey Mansell, which I thought I would, I was going to still come home with more money than I went with. Um, you know, the ADO, I believe they send players to the um, World Masters or something. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but uh, that's going to cost me, you know, a couple thousand dollars. By the time I fly there, uh, my wife comes with me all the time and, uh, you know, get a place to stay. And, like, there's just no money to be won. So, um, unfortunately, the, the events are great. You know, the ADO events and, you know, and that, and the one of them in Canada, they're great events, but the affiliation with the BDO, I think, is a struggle because who knows? Like, guys who got their spots last year uh, with the BDO, you know what, what kind of a mess that was mm-hmm. and, uh, and that. So I think, you know, I think, you know, we affiliated with the BDO back when, before it split, like back in the 70s, and it was the main place to go play darts. Um, and, you know, we lost that when the PDC, you know, became the place to be and we stayed with the BDO. So, um, but we are amateurs, make no mistake about it. Um, anybody who plays in North America is, is an amateur dart player. So, um, you know, the BDO is a, is a fantastic organization if it was run, you know, if they could just fix what was going wrong there, because Mm -hmm. it is a great place for amateurs. Like Barry Hearn says, it's the best place to go as an amateur player right yeah well we'll have to see where the where the video goes uh, in the future um well you are still working as you said um but you certainly have showed the level of a professional before are there any plans on getting uh to be a professional darts player um you know some honestly um i am supposed to retire from general motors uh this july 1st so um, I'll be 52 uh, years old and fully retired. So mm-hmm. I I want to go to Q school, but I don't know. I want to try it. I want to experience it. Uh, the I know guys, my friends who have the, the huge pile of people in one room, you know, trying to, you know, get warmed up before a match. I just think it'd be a great experience, you know, and that, but, uh, I don't know if I if I could live there, um, I, because it's you know you think I lose quite a bit of money when I change my Canadian dollars over to uh, you know pounds, yeah, and uh, even worse uh, to euros. So it's hard uh, it's hard to think that um, you know I could live there. Uh, so I don't know if I ever got my tour card. I I don't know what I would do. But the plans to attend Q school. Are there? You know what? I, not exactly plans. Okay. No, <laughs> I, I do want to. Yes. But I, it's not like I'm planning this January. Um, I have plans, the same same as going to Q school. I have plans on going back and uh, sitting in the crowd at the William Hill and watching <laughs> a world championship. Yeah. Uh, I would have gone last year to see my buddy Matt play in a heartbeat, but I had to work. So, um, you know, and it's, because back then, of course, like he's playing early in middle of December, and we don't get done for the holidays until like the 21st or 22nd. So um, I couldn't get the time off to go see Matt, but um, I definitely plan on going back and sitting in the crowd and cheering. Uh, it was a it, it was a crazy experience, even just sitting in the VIP section there. So mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to not only seeing you in the crowd, of course, but also seeing you back again at that stage or um, another stage, PDC stage, maybe. Um, well, thank you for joining us, uh, Jim Long. And uh, yeah, I wish you good luck in the future.
Hey, thank you very much for having me. And, uh, you know, I look forward to meeting you one of these days.